Hey everyone, my name is Kayla Durkin with North Dakota Teaching and today we are going to be talking about number talks. So number talks are really important no matter what age range. You can be in kindergarten or first grade, you can be in 11th or 12th grade, you can even be in college. So today I'm going to be focusing on number talks within the middle school, but these are problems that can be used with lower level kids or even higher level kids. So I do have a number talk product in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. It's the exact same thing. It just comes in more of a masculine type of theme or more of a feminine type of theme with the floral, but feel free to use whichever one you would like to in your classroom. So let me tell you a little bit about what you're going to find within this product. So first of all, let's talk about the process of a math talk. Now, a math talk should only take around 10 minutes. You are going to present the problem. You're going to give your students one to three minutes to work out the problem mentally. That is the most important part of a math talk is that there are no pencils, there's no whiteboards or markers. This all needs to be done in their head. Then you're going to have a few students share what they got as their answer. Now, right away, you just want to hear what they got. I got 90, I got 25, I got 42. Then we're going to have a few students share how they got the answer that they came up with. At the end, we will clarify our thinking and then we will move on for the day. So the first thing that you're going to find when you open up your download is this group facilitation layout. Now I'm sure you can't read this from where you are, but let me tell you all about it. The first thing on there is your display. Now. I would like to save on printing, and so mine are going to be projected with my projector on my whiteboard, but if you don't have a projector, you don't have to project yours. That's okay. You can print them big, or you can even print them small. Doesn't really matter, it's up to you. Again, I just prefer to project it because I save on printing, and then I know that all students can see the problem. When the problem is displayed, this is where students are going to start using their problem solving skills to start working through the problem mentally. It's really important to give students wait time. I like to give between one and three minutes just because I don't wanna rush students. And during this wait time, it's also important that you have a hand signal. I like the thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing. Thumbs up, I'm ready. Thumbs down, I'm not ready. The reason I don't want kids raising their hand or kind of moving around when they have the problem done is because we don't want other kids to feel rushed and not get a chance to finish the problem. And we also don't want kids to be like, oh, well, they already got it, so who cares if I do? So we really wanna use a signal like this. Of course, you're always going to have kids looking around the room and they might be peeking at their neighbors, but the reason we give between one and three minutes is we don't want kids just to come up with one answer. We want them to come up with as many answers as they possibly can. I really like to refer to this as productive struggle. I taught 10th grade geometry at my old school and we talked about productive struggle all of the time. It's okay if you don't know the answer right now, but hopefully eventually we'll be able to get to it. The next part on this facilitation sheet is optional. It's a turn and talk portion. If you have time and your math block is a little bit longer than the typical math block, you might have a lot of time for turn and talk, or if you're kind of crunched for time, you might want to skip that. The reason I really like turn and talk is because I know that I'm not going to hear from every single student every single day during our number talk session, just because I don't have time to hear from 25 to 30 kids. But if we give them the opportunity to turn and talk, then they're each getting a chance to say what they got and why they got it. And it's only going to take a couple more minutes. So continuing on our facilitation sheet, the next thing you're going to notice is that it talks about writing out what students got. So you will notice I left room at the bottom on all of these just because if you print them and want to write on them, great. If you want to use sticky notes, awesome. If you have an active board and you want to use your active pen and have students write their answers, that's fantastic too. It really doesn't matter what you do as long as you are writing what the students got. So now it's time to discuss how students got their answer. So this is so important because we are going to see a lot of different ways to solve different problems. We're going to be able to show students that mistakes are proof you're trying. It's okay if you didn't go through it the same way another person went through it. Did you get to the same answer though? This also gives students a chance to gain ownership of their learning and students can start to make sense of why algorithms work. 
During this part is where we start to see our number fluency and our autonomy growing. We're starting to figure out, oh, that's why the standard algor algorithm works the way it does. Students are so fascinated by the fact that we all solve them different ways, but yet we still all got the same answer. Okay, now is the final step on our group facilitation layout. It's time for teachers to ask their final questions. Tell me what is still confusing you. What isn't making sense yet? Do you agree or disagree? Can someone explain this in another way? Are we noticing any patterns? Will this method always work? I'm not sure what's my favorite part of this group facilitation layout. All I know is we're going to go through many different processes and challenges with our students, and yet they're all going to be learning. So let's break a problem down. Let's do it together. We're not going to take the full 10 minutes, but we will take a couple minutes. So together, let's do the problem 17 multiplied by 25. Now again, you cannot get out your scratch paper, you cannot grab out your phone and calculate this. We need to do it mentally. This is a great time to push pause and think through what you would do. So let's discuss a couple different ways that students might have done this. Now when I look at 17 times 25, right away I'm like, well that's a big number, that's kind of scary, but we're going to get through this really easily. So when I see this problem, right away the 25 sticks out to me because we deal with quarters all the time when we're shopping. So if I had seven quarters, that's a dollar 75. 25 times seven is 175. Now I'm going to say, okay, I know 25 times 10, anything times 10, we're just adding a zero, that's 250. So 250 plus 175, is 425. We suddenly were able to solve this without having to get out our pencil and paper, without having to line it up. Now I'm sure what a lot of you wanted to do was you wanted to, well, okay, first five times seven is 35. I need to carry the three. Okay, now I'm gonna move over. If we want to solve something quickly, is the standard algorithm going to help us? Of course it is but the standard algorithm isn't teaching us why the answer is the way it is. It's just telling us this is what you're doing and this is what you're going to get. Let's break this apart another way. I really like partial products. I used it all the time when I taught fourth grade. So if I have 17 times 25 again, I might just start by saying, okay, well, I know that 10 times 20 is 200. I know that 10 times five is 50. 200 plus 50 is 250. I know that seven times five is 35. 250 plus 35 is 285. And I know that seven times 20 is 140. 140 plus 285 brings us up to 425. So what we're really doing here with our number talks is we are breaking apart groups or decomposing numbers. We're learning conceptual understanding. We're learning how to compute these. We are also learning our math facts like the back of our hand. We are fluently multiplying and adding these together without hardly having to think about it. Now, would I have had to multiply any of these? Absolutely not. I could have used repeated addition. I could have used the doubling trick. There are so many different ways that I could have solved this math problem. I could have looked at this and said, okay, well, I know 17 plus 17 is 34. That means two times 17 is 34. That means 20 times 17 is 340 and went on from there. I could have doubled the 25 and said 50. Then instead of 17, I could have went one less and done 16. I divide that by two, that makes eight. 50 times eight is 400. Add that one back on that I took off. 400 plus 25 is 425. There are so many different ways to solve this. I'm sure you're shocked by how many different ways you saw me solve this, just like you're going to be shocked when you hear all of the different ways that your students are solving problems in front of you. Now, I'm sure you're thinking this is great, but you need a way to track this. If you're going to use 10 minutes every single day, you need to make sure that your student's time is accounted for. Which is why we have a rubric here, and there's two different ways to read this rubric. If you read it, going straight across on the top line. This is what you're going to be tracking each day. 
If you read it straight across on the bottom line, those are your I can statements for students. This is what the student is going to look at and figure which category they would like to be in for the day. I am not engaged or on task. I might have trouble explaining my reasoning or proving why my method makes sense. I am on task solving problems as many ways as I can. I am able to justify my answers and share with peers. I use math language to describe my thinking process and can share my reasoning multiple ways. So we have four different levels here, excelling, engaging, exploring, disengaged. Great way to track student behavior. Lastly, you're probably thinking, I know I'm a math teacher, but I don't have time to come up with all these answers for all these math talks. Well, don't you worry. You are also going to get an answer key here. It tells you which number the question is referring to. So we just did question one. You can see it on the slide here. When I go to question one, what is 17 multiplied by 25? 425. The answer is right there for you. So if this were me, I would probably print this and laminate this or print this and put it in my binder, print this somewhere in a special spot that I'm not going to lose it so that every single day I'm not trying to, oh, go back in the slide and figure out what the answer is going to be again. Okay, so I know I've told you that you could print these off, project them on your whiteboard, you could use them in whole group, you could use them in small group, you could use them one-on-one, -on -one, but you're probably thinking, what if the problems are too hard for my students? Every single one of these slides that you have seen is completely editable. If you want to edit this problem, don't worry about your answer key because your answer key is also editable. You can change every single thing if you want to make it easier, if you want to make it harder. If you want to do the same type of problem five days in a row, no problem. Just do 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. Add a couple lines on your answer key, put in the problems that you've done, and you are ready to go. So in this download, currently you are going to get 15 number talks, all completely editable. Every 15 days, I'm going to add 15 new number talks that you can use with your students. By the end of November, you should now have 130 number talks that will get you through, that you can add, you can change, you can edit, you can do whatever you want to do. So I really hope this product is going to be helpful for you. I know it's going to be incredible for me because it's really easy to find number talk stuff for elementary students, but it's not as easy to find number talk stuff for middle school or even high school students. I am so thankful to have you here hanging out with me today. I'm so grateful to have your listening ears as you watched my video. And I really hope that this is something that you're able to use with your students. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. And make sure to check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store where you will see this product and many others. Have a fantastic day. See you later.